Hey, coders of Earth, welcome back, hopefully back, or first time visitors. If not, subscribe. Always throwing automation videos with you, a lot in auto hockey. So I'd say 90% of my channel is auto hockey. So everything else is still automation. Uh, but today, I've seen this come up uh, quite a few times being asked on people who just say they want to run their script faster. How do they do it? Uh, I always kind of find this question a little funny just because they're like, yeah, my script, it takes one second to run all the code and perform the actions. How can I make it faster? I'm like, really? You're going to put all this effort into taking it from one second to half a second? Like, I don't know. But sometimes there is reasons you do want to run your script. You know, if it is taking 10 seconds, how can I make it 5 seconds? That's when it actually, like, is like, okay, you know, hey, why not? It can be pretty easy to do. Sometimes I find it funny when people are like, oh, I want to make my script uh, a fraction, like, 200 milliseconds faster. I'm like, but why? It just seems so weird that you need that. But hey, I, I maybe I don't know the scenario that they need. Maybe they do need that. If you guys have examples of when you need it to save 200 milliseconds on an entire script running, let me know in the comments below because I'm curious of uh, why people ask this a lot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I got a few different ways here, a few uh, tidbits to give you also. And uh, not all these are always going to work for your situation. Sometimes they might not do anything. You know, they might be useless. Uh, really depends on your situation and what you're doing. Uh, you know, auto hockeys, it's so lightweight that it's never really going to matter that much uh, as far as speed. There's not going to be too much you can always do, but sometimes there is. Honestly, to speed up your code, usually it's just going to be more about maybe doing a different approach on what the co code is doing and how you're writing it. But here's some common ways. So the most common one, which definitely is going to be probably out of all this, one of the biggest time savers, is... People get annoyed when they um, they do a sin command and they have like all this text down here as a sin command. Well, when you do a sin, it's basically mimicking typing. So it's still fast, but it is going H O W space T O space D O. To make it actually more of an instant thing, what we can do is instead of having our text that we want to uh, paste wherever or uh, type out, Instead of putting it down here with a send, we're going to put it into our clipboard. And then instead of send all that text, we're just going to do the up caret, which is a uh, control. It means uh, hold the control key down. Control V, which if you don't know for some odd reason, is the paste button <laughs> built into Windows. Just in case you didn't know. You'd be surprised. I've worked with people who never knew you could uh, do control C, control V. They were always using this. I was like, why? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and then no return. So we press F1, and it's just going to put it into the clipboard and then instantly paste it. So instead of typing it out, it's an instant paste of the entire string. This is way faster and probably one of the biggest time savers you're going to be doing if your uh, sin, what you're trying to sin, you know, is a full sentence or longer. It's definitely the way to go because it's going to be way more instant than having to have the computer type this all out. And if you have a lot of sins and using it a lot, you know, this is definitely going to be probably one of the biggest time savers I'm going to show you today. Um, I'm not going to jump into uh, the code too deep. I have tons of videos on this stuff. I'm just showing you the options you have for the most part. Uh, the other thing uh, that's probably the second go-to uh, outside of doing a sin for time saving is going to be set batch lines. Uh, so by default in auto hotkeys, there is a default sleep between every line of code which is, it's not very big, but it's 10 milliseconds. You know, if you have a large script, you know, 10 milliseconds is like nothing, but if you have a, you know, I've, I've written a script before that was, I think, like around 42,000 lines of code. So, and you're using it hundreds of times a day across like a, probably about 100 people, I think it was. Those 10 milliseconds can add up very fast over the course of a year, especially. Uh, when you're trying to do data analysis on you know improvements um, with your code uh, so set batch lines negative one make sure you put that little comma there in the hashtag pound sign whatever depending on your generation um, negative one 
that's going to switch it away from that default 10 milliseconds to zero. So every, there's going to be no 10 millisecond sleep between your lines of code. So if, especially as your code grows, your script gets longer, this is going to help a lot, uh, especially if you're using it a lot, uh, you know, across an entire team. This, this is something that could add up very quickly, even though 10 milliseconds doesn't sound like a lot. Yeah. Uh, another thing you can do is run as admin. Um, I know a lot of people will right click on their script and say run as admin. Um, this is kind of just saving your a step from having to go in and it's basically your script's going to automatically do it itself. Um, oh, another thing too is single instant force. That's always good to put in there. That way you don't accidentally run the script twice. Uh, that can cause issues and then you have two scripts running doing the exact same thing or trying to. Uh, whatever the newest script takes over the hotkeys though. I've done videos talking about that. Uh, set working directory. So we're basically seeing where is the script that you just launched. You know, is, for me it's on the desktop right now. Uh, if not, A is admin. So this is a built-in variable. So it's saying, is the script currently running as admin? If not, well, go ahead and run. So star, run as, and in quotations, and uh, put it into a variable, which are percent signs, a script full path. So now, right here with the uh, star and the run as, that's basically telling whatever, wherever the script is, go ahead and run it as an admin. Uh, you know, depending on the settings of your computer, but pretty much 99% of you, you will get a little pop-up saying, are you sure you want to run this as an admin? Just say yes. Um, so, yeah, this is just double checking that you did run in as admin. Uh, running as admin is going to give it a lot more power uh, for your CPU. But if you're using a computer that was made in like the last 20 years, you probably aren't going to notice much of a difference of running as admin versus not running as admin. Like, it's not going to affect your computer at all, like your uh, percent and your usage. Uh, honestly, this is more used in video games. Uh, you know, some video games will not take send commands of any type unless you are in admin and your game sometimes has to be in admin mode. Uh, so this is, this is something that's going to be useful more for gamers, to be honest, uh, you know, or if, you know, maybe you're in a work environment and something does require admin, you know, this could help you out. Um, so this is going to be honestly more of a time saver on the side of just launching your script versus, you know, using the contact. So, uh, not a lot of code here. This is kind of a lot more, you know, like tidbits and stuff. So, GUIs versus context menu factor uh, of 6 plus. And what I mean by that is, you know, let's say you want to do something more visual than using hotkeys. You want a drop-down menu. Uh, you have two options. You can create a GUI that has a drop-down menu in it. Or you could use what's called a context menu. And if you don't know what that is, this is a context menu. And you could have all your functionality in here and you say, okay, I want to click on select all. And then it will run whatever code is associated with that press. So did some testing around. As far as I can tell, using context menu uh, increased by a factor of 6 plus in speed. Uh, just because GUIs are using, you know, a little bit more power, you know, they take a little bit more to be created, you know, stuff like that. Uh, context menus, uh, they were six times faster. I don't know why I put a plus sign there. That should be a, a X. Six times faster than using a GUI as far as, like, CPU usage and speed. Uh, it was about a, a factor of six. Obviously, that's my computer. I have a gaming rig. You know, for you, it might be a factor of three times or something, but it's still going to be nice. Uh, no environment. Uh, you know, I have the note here. Uh, this is just pulled straight from their site. Uh, no environment is recommended for all scripts. It disables all environmental variables. So that's going to be very good for, like, your memory. Uh, key history zero and last lines. These are things that, honestly, you really only need when you're kind of, like, debugging or uh, maybe testing your script out first. This is going to dis disable them, um, and it's not going to be storing uh, that key history data. You're basically creating extra variables that you have no use for, uh, especially if you're handing it out to people, because obviously they're not going to be debugging your code, so there's no use for these in them. So you're just going to do key history zero. Basically, just get rid of that variable you don't need. You know, It's going to help your memory and stuff too. Um, 
Another one, set your priority of uh, to high. You know, when you launch them, they just launch in normal. And uh, you want it in high, that's going to give it the ability to use as much CPU usage as it needs. And there's nothing wrong with doing this because, like I said, if you're using a computer made in like the last 20-some years, running this your script at high, you're, you're not going to notice any lag or anything like it's but it's going to make your script definitely run a lot smoother. Um, and so this is something I put in almost all my scripts uh, when they get like long or doing some type of like heavy thing like uh, pixel or image search uh, because you're not going to notice a difference. Even if you have like three video games running, <laughs> having this run in high, like you're not going to notice anything except for that your script's running smoother. Um, so what you do is you can just do run notepad Dot exe or you know whatever you want this to be uh, three commas because we don't need these uh, filled in and then we're just gonna we're gonna get the uh, PID from it and then we're gonna use that down here as a variable and basically we're saying process priority whatever program the PID is it's identification uh, which is just like a I forget it's like a five digit number or something like that make it a high priority um, this is something you can do by yourself from the task manager, um, but now you can make your script do it for you. It saves you some steps, and it makes sure that you don't forget to run it on high. Uh, send input is definitely the fastest send method. There's a few different send methods out there. Um, so using send input, uh, once again, you know, might you might notice a difference, you might not. Um, but it's definitely going to be the fastest option. Send event, which is what uh, basically the default when you use send, it's automatically going to be send event. Now you can change this default as a setting at the beginning of your script. Um, that way you don't have to use send event every single time. Um, but yeah, send event, that's the default. That's the second fastest. Um, but you can go ahead and switch it to send input. Might help you a little bit. Uh, this one, I, I haven't been really tested. So I can't 100% vouch for this one, but I have seen this mentioned multiple times uh, through different forums, Reddit, stuff like that. Uh, but apparently, the x64 bit version of AutoHotKey in version 1 is faster. Use it when available. Uh, like I said, I haven't tested that, so I don't know how big of an improvement that is. You know, if it's a huge improvement, a small improvement, are you even going to notice? But... I've seen this mentioned multiple times by people, so I'm not sure uh, you know how big of a difference it is, but it does make sense. Um, so yeah, and the last one, this one comes up all the time. People know what a sleep is, but a lot of times people have never even seen the command called set timer. And they're you know the question comes up a lot of times, even if they have seen them, which one should I use? You know. And then you see a lot of people who are just using so many sleeps versus set timers. And everybody's always like, oh, no, switch to set timer. It's better. Well, why is it better? Well, a sleep completely pauses the script at that line. So if you have a sleep five seconds, your entire script's basically locked up for five seconds. Where a set timer, you could have it set for five seconds to perform whatever actions it's not locking your script up, meaning during those five seconds, you can use another hotkey and it will work until that set timer hits. So this is very useful. I mean, if you were to have something in here like a sleep one hour for some reason, you only want some action to be formed one hour, but you have other hotkeys, you're not gonna be able to do anything because your script's completely locked up waiting for the sleep to finish. But with a set timer, you have it set for it to go off every hour. Well, in between those hours, you can do whatever you want. You can use your other hotkeys. So this is just a lot better in flexibility. All right. I'm sure there is stuff I missed in here. I tried my best of just what I could think of off my brain. So if you guys have any that I missed, recommendations, definitely let us know in the comments uh, if anything I missed or things that you've done and noticed improvements on. Uh, definitely want to hear your tips and trips, tricks. And then uh, all our other viewers, you know, it'll help them out too in the long run. All right, everybody, if you have any questions on this, definitely ask away. I will see you guys on the next one. Please hit that thumbs up. Helps me a lot. Lets me know that you guys enjoy like this certain type of video. So I know what to kind of send out to you guys, maybe in upcoming videos. Hit the subscribe because I'm always throwing videos at you guys. 
every single week, unless it's a holiday, which, hey, I want to enjoy getting fat on Thanksgiving turkey. Uh, but I'll probably still even throw videos out on those weeks, so definitely hit that sub button. Love you guys. See you on the next one.